the dragon Leviathan and Behemoth explained. The Bible describes two incredible animals, the Behemoth and the Leviathan, but no one has been able to identify them. The huge Behemoth has been explained as being an elephant. But the behemoth is described as living in a marsh. A hippopotamus. But the behemoth is also described as having a tail like a tree. A dinosaur. Because its tail is as thick as a tree. But the behemoth eats grass like an ox, yet such dinosaurs have long necks like giraffes to eat leaves. The Leviathan has been explained as being a dragon and the Leviathan is actually called a dragon. The Leviathan is specifically said to breathe fire. The Leviathan can be played with like a bird, i.e. it can fly. The ancient translations have the Leviathan on top of a huge pile of gold. If the Leviathan is called a dragon, breathes fire like a dragon, can fly like a dragon, sits on gold like a dragon, then perhaps it really is a dragon. However, not wishing the Bible to mention mythical creatures, the Leviathan has also been explained as being a killer whale. The Leviathan is described as having frightening teeth and living in the sea. A crocodile. The Leviathan is also described as having scales. But neither of these creatures breathe fire. However, there is a beetle, the Bombardier beetle, which can produce a spray of boiling hot liquid to defend itself from predators. It stores two chemicals in reservoirs, which it can then mix together and fire at any attacker.
so some people have tried to see if there were any large creatures with suitable places to store the required chemicals to produce fire in a similar way. Some dinosaurs are said to have had such hollow storage areas connected to their nose or mouth. A hollow tube on its head. Perhaps used to defend itself from T-Rex. T-Rex itself had many compartments connected to its nasal passages. Perhaps used to make barbecues. But none of these lived in the sea. Not deterred, some have said that a dinosaur crocodile Sarcosuchus, which could fit a whole human into its mouth, had such a storage place at the end of its snout. The Leviathan is said to make the deep sea boil like a cooking pot. Perhaps it was trying to make the primordial soup. Yet we are told that the Leviathan beholds every high thing. But clearly the Sarcosuchus could not see up into the trees. I'm the king of the castle and you're the dirty rascal. However, the true identity of the behemoth and leviathan is related to how Christopher Columbus thought he could safely sail westwards to Asia. With the current knowledge of the globe it was assumed that he would die sailing such a large distance. However, Columbus had made a very fortunate mistake, he thought the globe was smaller than it actually is. By sheer luck, the far east of Asia, beyond India, coincided with the Bahamas, hence the term West Indies. So he did reach land before their supplies ran out. Discovering chocolate in the process. However, for our discussion, he strengthened his faulty reasoning by using a semi-biblical book which claimed that the seas were one-seventh of the size of the land. It was still wrong but if it were true then there could not have been too much sea to cross to Asia. The book reads as follows. On the third day you commanded the waters to be gathered together in a seventh part of the earth. This refers to the third day of creation when the dry land appeared. An ancient map of the known world. On the fifth day you split the behemoth and leviathan, putting one to the land and one to the seventh part. Painting of the behemoth and leviathan by William Blake, 1757-1827. On the fifth day of creation God created great sea creatures.
Here the Leviathan stays in the sea, but the behemoth goes to the land. It is the fact that the sea is one-seventh of the land that is important. Significantly, the large, bronze immersion basin outside Solomon's temple was called the sea. The Bronze Sea the creation story has been linked to the temple tent the tabernacle, the predecessor to Solomon's temple. And it is the bronze sea which is one-seventh of the surface of the central temple part, the dry land. Warning, Mathematics The area of the central temple part is approximately 121.5 square meters, or 1,350 square feet. The area of the Bronze Sea is approximately 17.4 square meters, or 192.8 square feet. Yet this is almost exactly one seventh times seven equals one hundred and twenty one point eight square meters or one thousand three hundred and forty nine point six square feet. This means that the behemoth and Leviathan were linked to the Bronze Sea Basin, the seventh part. Underneath the Bronze Sea were twelve bronze oxen. Yet the word behemoth in Hebrew means animals in the plural, light trousers is plural but is one item. Additionally, we are told that the behemoth eats grass like an ox. Therefore it is these twelve oxen which are the behemoth. So what could be the Leviathan? Ancient symbolism suggested that there was a fountain in the Holy of Holies. Yet not only was the base of the Bronze Sea Square like the Holy of Holies, but it was also called a Holy of Holies itself. Hence the fountain was really in the Bronze Sea. By tradition, the base of the Bronze Sea was square. Another semi-biblical book says that when the Behemoth and Leviathan were separated, that the Leviathan went to dwell in the abysses of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. Other books say that the fountain had seven mouths, and that the Leviathan had more than one head. So there must have been a seven-headed serpent fountain. And it is this which is the many-headed Leviathan. This is why the Psalms say that there is a great and wide sea in which the Leviathan plays, the sea being the bronze basin and the Leviathan a fountain. This is also why the book of Revelation can describe a seven-headed dragon serpent spewing water. But aren't dragons supposed to breathe fire? The seven-branched lampstand menorah was also termed a holy of holies, and it had flames of fire.
and as a fountain of bright flames is described, then the lampstand can also represent the dragon. Thank you for watching. Explanations, picture sources, and acknowledgements can be found at www.rwtheology.org slash creation dash stories dot html or www.facebook.com slash richard worthington theology